This video is going to be about the medial compartment of the thigh or the adductors at the hip joint. And we're going to first look at their proximal attachments on the pubic bone. So when you think of the medial compartment of the thigh or the adductors, think of the pubic bone. So the anominate, the anominate bone or the hip bone is made up of three bones, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. So we're going to look at the pubis first because, the, or we're going to look at the pubis because that's where most of the adductors attach proximally. And if you think of the adductors in layers, where a superficial layer, an intermediate layer, and a deep layer, it will also help you understand their attachments on the pubic bone. So here's the pubic symphysis. So the bodies of both pubic bones unite at the pubic symphysis and there's a fibrocartridge disc there. This is the superior pubic ramus, and we can see the pectineus muscle, which is in the superficial layer, is attached to the superior pubic ramus. The adductor longus is also in the superficial layer of adductors, and you can see here that it's attaching on the body of the pubis. Let's stop for a second. This is the, thigh, the left thigh of the cadaver that's been dissected. To the left of your screen is distal, and this is the patella. To the right of your screen is proximal, and here's the ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine. At the bottom of your screen is lateral, and at the top of your screen is medial. So now you're oriented using anatomical terms. Both the anterior musculature, anterior compartment, and the medial compartment are dissected. And thank you to Brandon for removing all the neurovasculature so we can focus on the muscles. So we're going to start off with the iliopsoas. This is the iliacus and psoas major that come down and attach on the lesser trochanter. This is in the anterior compartment of the thigh. Here's the sartorius. This is the tensor fascia lata, and the tensor fascia lata is grouped with the gluteal muscles in Keith Moore's clinically oriented anatomy. So now I'm gonna reflect the sartorius, and we're gonna look at the four heads of the quadriceps femoris. This is the rectus femoris. This is the vastus lateralis, the vastus medialis, and then if I pick up the rectus femoris, we'll see the vastus intermedius. I'm going to completely remove the anterior compartment muscles so we can focus on the medial compartment. But before I do that, <laughs> let me point out those muscles. So this is the pectineus, and as I mentioned before, the pectineus in Keith Moore's clinical oriented anatomy is placed in the anterior compartment, but I think of it more of a medial compartment muscle. You can see between the iliopsoas and the pectineus, the cut openings of the femoral vessels. So that's pectineus. This is adductor longus, adductor longus. And in a moment, we'll see the brevis and the magnus and the gracilis. So I'm going to reflect the whole anterior compartment or the quads out of the way. The quadriceps are reflected. Notice the shaft of the femur. The only quadricep that attaches anteriorly on the shaft is the vastus intermedius. I'm going to point out the iliopsoas once again, how it's winding around to medially to get to the lesser trochanter. Here's the pectineus and the adductor longus. So remember, they're considered superficially located in that medial compartment. So think of these muscles in layers. So the superficial layer is the pectineus and the adductor longus. 
The pectineus is on the superior pubic ramus. The adductor longus is on the body of the pubis, just inferior to the pubic crest. If I lift up the pectineus, we can start seeing the adductor brevis. And I'm gonna reflect the adductor longus. So here's the adductor brevis. So that's on the body and inferior pubic ramus, just as the gracilis is. And here's the gracilis. It's the only one of the medial compartment that crosses the knee. Okay, so pectineus, adductor longus are superficial. Next layer is the adductor brevis, and then the next layer is the adductor magnus. So all of this is the adductor magnus. All of this is the adductor magnus. It has two parts, and the two parts are the adductor part and the hamstring part. The hamstring part is here and it attaches to the ischial tuberosity. The adductor part attaches to the inferior pubic ramus and the ramus of the ischium. What also distinguishes the two parts from each other is their distal attachment. And I haven't shown you the distal attachments on the bone, but I will after we finish with the cadaver. But the adductor part attaches to the linea aspera the entire length of the linea aspera, and also the supracondylar line of the femur. The hamstring part, follow my probe, has a strong tendon here that attaches to the adductor tubercle that's on the medial aspect of the femur, proximal to the medial epicondyle. Notice this huge gap between the hamstring part hamstring part and the adductor part. This is called the adductor hiatus. And that's where the femoral vessels pass through from the medial compartment of the thigh to the posterior knee region, the popliteal region. And that's where the femoral vessels change name to the popliteal vessels. We'll look at the um, attachments on the femur next. View of the femur um, in the netter atlas. So many muscles attach to the linea aspera. And if you think about the adductor group, the medial thighs we've been talking about, most of them attach to the linea aspera. But so do the vastus intermedius, no it doesn't, I made a mistake, the vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis. So let's use the layers again. Let's use the layers again to look um, in the same you know, order that we talked about the muscles. So the pectineus muscles was superficial. Here it is attaching to what's called the pectineal line. And notice the pectineal line is right inferior to the lesser trochanter. The adductor longus was in the same layer as the pectineus. Here's the label for the adductor longus. And so this is the distal attachment of the adductor longus on the linea aspera. So you can see it's more distal on the linea aspera. Then the next layer was the adductor brevis. Here's the label for the adductor brevis. If we follow it, it also attaches to the linea aspera, but it's more proximal on the linea aspera. And it should be a little more lateral on the linea aspera. Okay, so superficially was pectineus and adductor longus. The next layer was the adductor brevis. That was the intermediate layer. And then the deep layer was the adductor magnus. So here's the label for the adductor magnus. And remember, it has an adductor part and a hamstring part. They're not called heads, they're called parts. So follow that pointer. And this blue strip 
that it spans the entire length of the linea aspera is the distal attachment of the adductor part of the adductor magnus. Notice it attaches more laterally on the linea aspera than does the adductor brevis and the adductor longus. Here on the medial aspect of the femur, distal femur, just proximal to the medial epicondyle is the adductor tubercle. And that's where the hamstring part of the adductor magnus attaches distally. So it made it as far as it could distally. It doesn't cross the knee. It attaches on that adductor tubercle. Another thing of note, we haven't talked about innervation of these muscles, but most of them are innervated by the obturator nerve and the adductor magnus hamstring part is innervated by the tibial branch of the sciatic nerve. So it's an exception to the rule, it's not innervated by obturator. The pectineus was another one that has a, has a, could have a dual innervation. It's innervated by the femoral nerve and possibly also the obturator nerve. So last one is the gracilis, and the gracilis is the only one that crosses the knee. And we can't see its distal attachment on this posterior view because it attaches on the anterior medial aspect of the proximal tibia, <clears throat> so it can't be seen on this picture. It attaches with the sartorius and the semitendinosus. They are the three that make up. Okay, so the last thing I wanna point out is the attachments of the vastus lateralis and medialis. And the reason is, is because they also attach to linea aspera, even though they're anterior compartment muscles. So check out this red long line. It's the most medial one. That's the attachment of the vastus medialis. So it's the most medially attached on the, vas on the linea aspera. Now let's look at the vastus lateralis. So this is the vastus lateralis, this long skinny red line that goes all the way up to the greater trochanter is the attachment of the vastus lateralis. So it's the most laterally attached on the linea aspera. And that ends our video on the medial thigh. Thank